Welcome and great day viewers, our topic to Welcome and great day viewers, our topic today is on fluorescence microscopy. If you are new here, welcome, we are a group of retired professors sharing bite-sized videos in life sciences. Let's dive into the topic for today. Often as a researcher, you may be considering whether fluorescence microscopy is the appropriate method for your project or already using the technique with a sample in hand, unsure of the processes occurring between the sample and the image. Fluorescence Microscopy Applications Aided by its wide range of applications with relatively few requirements, fluorescence microscopy has long been an essential tool in biological research that can be used to gain new insights into biological samples. Unlike traditional light microscopy, which relies on the absorption or refraction of light in a sample to create an image, fluorescence microscopy detects light that is transmitted back by the sample. This technique is particularly useful in biological research, as it allows scientists to visualize specific molecules and structures within a sample. Introducing the fluorophore. One of the key components of fluorescence microscopy is the fluorophore, which is a molecule that generates the fluorescence in a sample. When light of a specific wavelength, a photon, is absorbed by an electron in a fluorophore, the electron jumps to a higher energy level, causing the molecule to become excited. This process is known as excitation. However, the excited state is unstable, and the electron quickly reverts back to its ground state, releasing energy in the form of fluorescence. This process is known as emission. The emitted photon has a longer wavelength and lower energy than the photon that excited the fluorophore. This process occurs in nanoseconds. Fluorescent spectra and Stokes shift. A fluorophore can absorb and emit photons with various wavelengths, which is categorized as excitation and emission spectra respectively. However, all fluorophores have peak wavelengths of excitation and emission depending on their chemical structure. The difference between the excitation and emission wavelengths of a fluorophore is known as the Stokes shift. This is what makes fluorescence detectable above the background in a fluorescence microscope. Knowing the excitation and emission spectra of a fluorophore is critical when choosing the best light sources and filters for a fluorescence microscope as well as when visualizing multiple fluorophores in a sample. However, if the emission spectra of the two fluorophores overlap significantly, the signal of one fluorophore will bleed through in the detection of the other. Therefore, if you want to detect the signal of two fluorophores, choose these so that their emission spectra do not overlap. By using filter wheels with both excitation and emission filters, multiple fluorophores can be simultaneously detected with high accuracy and efficiency. This method, known as colocalization and interaction study, allows for the capture of dynamic changes in the sample. Visualizing fixed samples with immunofluorescence. Since the discovery of the green fluorescent protein, GFP, in the jellyfish Equoria Victoria, a whole suite of FPs has been made available through genetic engineering. These can be genetically encoded as fusions with your proteins of interest and visualized in samples of single cells to whole organisms. Immunofluorescence is a powerful technique that allows scientists to visualize specific proteins or other molecules within a fixed sample using a fluorophore conjugated antibody. This method is particularly useful in biological research as it allows for the targeted detection of specific molecules within a sample. In this technique, a primary antibody is used to detect the antigen of interest, and a secondary antibody that is conjugated with a fluorophore is used to detect the resulting immune complex. This allows scientists to visualize specific proteins or other molecules within a sample. In live cell fluorescence staining, scientists use similar methods to visualize molecules within living cells. This two-step process results in the targeted visualization of the specific molecule of interest. Immunofluorescence can be applied to a wide range of samples, including cells and tissue samples, and offers a high degree of specificity and sensitivity. The technique allows for the visualization of virtually any biological molecule, 
structure, or phenomenon, and a wide range of fluorophores are available, making it possible to visualize samples in many different colors. Immunofluorescence a key advantage of immunofluorescence is that it allows scientists to visualize specific molecules within a sample without the need for complex or time-consuming sample preparation. This makes it an especially useful technique for studying fixed samples, as it allows for the detection of specific molecules without the need for extensive sample processing. In essence, if there is a primary antibody available to detect your nucleic acid, protein, or post-translational modification of interest, you can visualize it by immunostaining followed by fluorescence microscopy in cells and tissue samples. Overall, immunofluorescence is an essential tool in biological research, allowing scientists to visualize specific molecules within a fixed sample with high specificity and sensitivity. This technique opens the door to new insights and discoveries, and enables researchers to further understand the complex processes that occur within living organisms. Live Cell Imaging and Time-Lapse Microscopy Live cell microscopy is further enhanced by adding the dimension of time through time-lapse experiments. Instead of just capturing single images, time-lapse fluorescence microscopy allows for the acquisition of multiple images over time, revealing dynamic changes in the cellular environment as a result of treatments or changes in the cell cycle stage. This technique allows for the creation of multicolored and 3D movies, showcasing the dynamic processes within the cells. 3D Visualization of Cellular Structures Fluorescence microscopes have the capability to capture images of the sample in optical sections, known as Z-stacks, providing 3D visualization of cellular structures. Confocal microscopes are particularly useful in this aspect, as they enable laser-mediated illumination of a single spot at a time. This method allows for capturing only the fluorescence from that spot and scanning across the sample to generate the image, preventing the blurriness caused by out-of-focus light as in wide-field fluorescence microscope. Closing Perspectives Overall, fluorescence microscopy is a versatile and powerful technique that can be used to visualize a wide range of biological molecules and structures. Whether you are sitting in front of a computer or a microscope, understanding how fluorescence microscopy works can help you to make the most of this technique in your research. As a summary, we have explained the principles of fluorescence, the mechanics of fluorescent microscopes, and the various uses of fluorescence microscopy.